In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this lower third inside of Adobe After Effects. So let's get into it. So once you're inside of Adobe After Effects and you've got a brand new composition created, the first step is to focus on the box animation. So before we do anything, we just need to create that rectangle. So we'll go up to this rectangle tool on the top bar of After Effects, select that. Then we'll go across to Fill and Stroke. So select the word Fill and make sure you select No Fill. Press OK on this. Then go across to the word Stroke and select Solid Color. Press OK on that. And then you can just leave this as white because we're going to add a gradient to this later on. Then we'll just increase that stroke to around 5, 6, 7, 8, somewhere around there. And then we'll just turn on the proportional grid and we'll just draw a rectangle roughly in the middle of the frame. So somewhere around here. So from here, we want to go into the shape layer one. We'll go rectangle one. And then you can see we've got add and a little play button next to it. We'll press that and we'll go down to trim paths. So we need to start with this off screen. So let's go into trim paths and pull the start down to 0% and create a brand new keyframe on start. Then we'll move roughly one and a half seconds over and pull this all the way up to 100%. Now, when we play this back, you can see we've got this line animating in. But at the moment, the rotation looked a little robotic. So we're going to convert these linear keyframes here into easy ease keyframes. So we'll right click on one of those keyframes, go to keyframe assistant and we'll select easy ease. And now when we play this back, you can see the animation looks a lot more professional. Now, if that animation was too fast for you, then please feel free to just extend the gap between these keyframes. So as you can see, extending the gap slows that down a little and then bringing them closer together speeds that up. So we're going to keep this at around a two second distance between the first and the second keyframe. And then from there, we're just going to hold for a moment. So maybe half a second. Then we'll go into transform and we've got position scale. So I'm just going to create a brand new keyframe on position. I'll create a brand new keyframe on scale. Then we'll move roughly a second over and we'll pull the scale down. But at the moment, you can see the entire box is going to shrink. So instead, let's unlink scale. Then we'll pull the first number down and you can see we're going to get this square. So if you need, by the way, if you need to have the proportional grid on for reference, then feel free to do so. So just pull the scale down until it's here and then we can decrease the scale here if we wanted to create more of a rectangle. But if you're going for the square effect, then just leave this as this. So when we play this back, you can see that's going to animate on. Then it's going to shrink into a square, but we didn't move the position. And it would also be really cool as well if at this point the box shrunk a little bit. So we're just going to pull the scale down even further here and then we'll pull this scale down as well. And then we'll move this position like this. Let's see how that looks. As you can see, it's animating over to there. So that's not what we want. We want it to shrink and then move across. And as it moves across, it reveals the text. So we're going to move these position keyframes over to the right. And when we play this back from the beginning, it animates on, it shrinks, and then it goes across. But there was a bit too much of a hold here. It just, it just hesitated a touch too long. So we'll move those keyframes over to the left. I would argue that that was too slow as well. So let's close the gap between those keyframes and then it will move over to the left. But that needs to happen a lot sooner and a lot quicker. So we'll pull that closer and decrease the gap. There you go. And again, we want to convert these keyframes into easy ease keyframes. Let's see how that looks. Perfect. And at this moment in time as well, if you wanted to increase the stroke width, by the way, then feel free to just increase this number like this. Now from here, I'm going to move on to the gradient. So we're going to go into effects and presets and search for four color gradient. But if you just put the number four in, that should come up with four dash color gradients. Drop that on. And here we are just going to select four different colors, but I'm going to select a purple hue for each single version. So I'm going to go for this purple hue, but I'm going to have a slightly different tone of purple for each color. So this first one is going to be a normal purple. The second one will be a darker purple. Third one is more of a pink. So we'll keep that roughly there. 
And then the fourth one, we're going to lean in towards the blacks and have a really dark purple. And then we'll increase the blend. And that's just going to blend everything together to create this really nice gradient. Of course, if you wanted more contrast, then you could throw in some random colors into there so we can add a red and maybe go for a yellow, for example. And that's going to look dramatically different. But I do like the look of this purple color scheme. Of course, this animates in, this shrinks and then nudges over to the right. Of course, as well, if you actually wanted to create a rectangle rather than a square, you can just pull the scale down at this point, hovering over this keyframe and just pull down this second number to create more of a rectangle effect like this. So it shrinks and then nudges over. And then when it nudges over, it's going to wipe on the text. So let's do that now. So without animating anything, let's just go to the T icon and then just type out a word of your choice. So I'm going to go for Brooker Films. I'll go over to the character window on the right. And if you're not seeing the character window, then just go into window and select character. Make sure there is a tick there. Then we're just going to change the font. So I'm going to go Monster Rat Bold. I'll decrease the size of this. I'm just going to add some line spacing, just remove some of that line spacing. And then I'm just going to position this just next to the box for reference. So somewhere around here, this is where I want this to be. So as you can see at the moment, it all looks a little bit off. So I'm just going to nudge the text over to the right. Then I'll go to this end keyframe on the position and I'll just nudge the position over like this. So let's go to animate in and then at this point when it nudges over here, this is where we want to animate the, the text. So we'll go to that last keyframe on the box position and we'll create a brand new keyframe on position on the text. Then we'll go over to that first keyframe and we'll move the position of the text over to the left so that it goes past this box. Then we'll go to that last keyframe and we'll just draw a rectangle mask around the text like this. And we'll go into that mask and create a brand new keyframe on mask path. Then we're just going to go across and you want to follow this mask. So you want to move this mask over so that it's in line with this line here. So if we nudge this over, it should be following this line. So go across a few frames, nudge that mask back over, go back a few frames, nudge that mask over again, and just keep repeating this process until you get rid of the text like this. There you go. So that now looks really cool. Now I am just going to convert this last keyframe on the position to an easy ease keyframe or an ease in keyframe. And as you can see, that's going to look really nice, but it has actually affected the mask. So I might need to go into all of these keyframes and then just budge these back over again. As you can see, they've all nudged just a little bit out of position. There you go. And that's now back to where it was. So let's play this back. There you go. So let's take this from the beginning and see how this looks. Looks really cool. Although I would argue there's still too much of a hesitation there. So I'm just going to drag all of these keyframes over to the left. And when we play this back, less of that hesitation now looks great. That looks really cool. And of course, if you wanted to, you could also add another line animation at this moment in time to animate between the box and the letter. So let's make sure nothing is selected. We'll go up to the pen tool and we'll just turn on the proportional grid to help us draw these straight lines. Just going to go up to here, draw across so that we're roughly between the text and the box. Then we'll come down to here and we'll just carry this on like this. Now I'm just going to go in and I'm just going to move these points closer in like this and like this. And then I'm just going to decrease the stroke on this so that it's only around five or six. And again, I'm just going to add a gradient onto this. So I'm going to go onto that shape layer, copy the four color gradients, paste it onto this line, but I'm going to change the color so that it's a little bit different. So let's go for a yellow in this example. So go for four different tones of yellow. There you go. That looks great. So we'll turn off the proportional grid. And then we'll just animate this on at this moment in time. Again, feel free to move this around to get this to where you want this to sit. So that looks cool. 
So we'll go into Shape Layer 2, we'll go into Contents, select Add Trim Paths, drop down into the Trim Paths, we'll pull the end to 0%, create a brand new keyframe on end at 0, move across, pull this to 100, convert these keyframes from linear to easy ease keyframes, and now when we play this back, you can see we've got the box animation, shrinks, moves across, reveals text, and then we've got this line. But that line was arguably too fast. So I'm just going to increase the gap between those keyframes even more. That looks great. And of course, you can also add in some more shapes and animations over here on the left. Or alternatively, you could actually use this real estate over here to add in some sort of logo or a subtitle or something. Or you could even add your subtitle in underneath this yellow line. So let's just create some new text. Let's go for weekly videos on YouTube. We'll just decrease the scale of this. Move this underneath this text next to the line like this. We'll create a brand new keyframe on the position. So press P to load position. Create a brand new keyframe on position. Move across, nudge this down, then move across again and nudge this up above that line. Convert these keyframes to easy ease keyframes again. There you go. And then we're just going to create a mask around this text. So select the text go up to the rectangle tool and draw that mask on that yellow line. Create a brand new keyframe on mask path on that last keyframe. Go to the second keyframe, make sure that it is touching this yellow line. Then we'll go to that first keyframe and make sure the top of this is touching the yellow line so that it disappears. And now that appears from that yellow line. So let's play this back from the very beginning. Let's see how this all looks. There you go, that looks really cool. Again, there's so much that you can do with this. You can add more bars animating across. You can have your logo on the left in this space. You could have some more shapes animating across the left. There's so much that you can do with this. In fact, you could also have this bar get thicker over time so that it becomes a background for this text. There's so much that you can do with this variation, just playing with these shape layers and trim paths and the stroke width. There's so much that you can do with this. So feel free to get creative and experiment with the techniques featured in this video to create a really awesome animation inside of After Effects. So there you go. Thank you ever so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate your support and hopefully I will see you on the next video. See you there.